on functional annotation and having done genotype refinement, you've gotten all your calls, you want to analyze them in some way. I mean, sort of the, the, the branch is here, right? You've done everything, but now you want to evaluate and see, are my variants good? Can I use them to make predictions? Can I use them to answer the questions that I asked when I first set up my particular experiment? And so, <clears throat> you know, I, I needn't tell you, I think, that the real purpose of doing sequencing is to answer some biological questions. Whether that's characterizing uh, particular allele frequencies in a population that has yet to be studied, or whether that's trying to assess the impact of a variant on a particular trait. Um, or whether it's trying to characterize different forms of, of cancer by their genomic, um, genomic signatures. And so, in order to do this, not only do you need to evaluate and assess whether what you got out of sequencing is good, but you also need a way of querying that data um, in such a way that it's fast and, and intuitive and not really a chore. And so, um, what I'm going to be talking about a bit here are sort of real examples of using the GATK to answer certain questions and of how to evaluate data for sort of quality. Um, and I use, in particular, human data. And I would refer you guys to um, the GATK docs in the forum for other information and additional. Again, this is, there's a lot that you can do here, and I can only show you a small fraction of it. All right, so the kinds of things you might want to do with a call set are saying, you know, of my two call sets, let's say 1,000 genomes in my new call set, how many things did I discover that were already discovered in 1,000 genomes, right? Or I have some sample that I sequence as a control. Did it, is it gen, are its genotypes lining up or has something gone wrong? Um, do I find that there are differences between batches above and beyond what I would expect just due to having different sets of individuals who might have private mutations? Um, do I care about a particular gene that I just want to see all the variants in that gene and no other variants. Um, so one tool to do this is select variants. And what select variants does is it allows you to pull out samples and allows you to pull out sites. And you can pull out samples and sites based on um, properties of those samples, in particular the sample ID um, or you know, functions that will match sample IDs, and properties of the site itself which could be the location by passing in dash L, or it could be parameters in the info field. So you can easily um, select on, you know, allele frequency less than 1% by adding in select AF less than 1. Then it will look in the info field, look for an AF annotation, and ask, is it less than or greater than what I supplied? So 0 0.01. And so here's, here's the question. How many variants do I have in a cohort? Um, and this is usual to say, you know, how many variants in Europe from the 1,000 genomes were discovered? And so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to use select variants. I'm going to pass in the full 1,000 genomes data, all, all 1,000 individuals that come from all of the populations in 1,000 genomes. And I'm going to give it a sample file. And what this sample file does is one per line, it lists the sample IDs of just the samples that I know came from the European cohort. And I'm going to say, sites that are filtered out, that 1,000 genomes doesn't believe are real, I don't want to see them. And sites that, after I've subset to this particular set of samples, are monomorphic, have allele count zero, I don't want to see those either. Because those, although those sites were discovered, they weren't present in Europe, so they were discovered in at the African samples or the Asian samples or something like that. And I'm going to output into a binary version of a VCF. This is just a VCF. Um, and what I get out are you know, just the sites that are polymorphic in the European samples from 1,000 genomes and no others. Right? And then what I can do is I can just simply count the number of lines in that file, and it gives me the total number of variants that were discovered in the European samples. Similarly, rather than collapsing sites down into some subset, you might have two or even multiple call sets that you want to put together. Um, and the tool to do this is called combined variants. Um, and sort of the easiest use case is if you've called, say, per chromosome, and you just have VCFs that are completely disjoint but have the same samples, all you need to do are pass in multiple dash Vs and a dash O and everything's fine. 
It gets more complicated when you have disjoint sequences of samples. It gets even more complicated when you have samples that appear several times in, throughout the VCFs and the sites overlap. Um, and so I reference you again to the GHK docs to understand exactly what these command lines do. But the point is that they just sort of allow you to say, you know, I'm more confident in this call set than that call set. So if there's a genotype mismatch, use the one from this call set rather than the other one. And what it does is it takes all of these VCFs, it combines them into one VCF. Again, one variant per line, missing samples who had genotypes, sorry, samples at a site that was present in one VCF but not another VCF will be filled in with no calls because nothing was ascertained at that particular site. And you get a sort of squared off VCF that you know, has, has additional no calls because of differences in sites and differences in samples. But it's a, I mean, it's a complicated tool precisely because it's a powerful tool. Um, and so this is, a, this is an example from uh, an analysis that a office mate of mine was doing prior to ASHG. And we had sequenced a number of families. We were interested in, in type 2 diabetes. And we wanted to know what was the sort of burden of private mutation in these families. And we only had these families. We didn't have a sort of large selection of other people from that same population so that we could exclude. And so um, what we wanted to do was, oh, let's go here. What we wanted to do was uh, exclude things that were discovered in an exome sequencing project and in 1,000 genomes, right? And so uh, what we can do is use combined variants. We pass in this VCF that has all the variants discovered in, the, in an exome sequencing project, and this VCF, which has all the variants discovered in 1,000 genomes. And then a, a third VCF, which is the families that we, that we want to assess. We want to understand what their private mutations are. And so what this is going to do is it's going to provide a, a VCF that has all of the sites discovered in any of these call sets, and in addition, a, an, a key in the info field that says, for each site, which of these call sets was it present in. Okay, and so what that allows you to do is then say, you know, if the key has ESP or if the key has 1,000 genomes, I don't want to see it because it's not private to type 2 diabetes, right? And so once you have this combined VCF that has all this information about for each variant, which call sets did it happen to come from, you can select right on that set annotation. So just with combined variants and select variants, you can exclude all variants that have been discovered in other call sets and just see the things that are private to your data. All right. <clears throat> so aside from manipulating these, these variant call files and being able to subset them and combine them, you want to be able to assess them for quality or at least assess the data in which they contain for quality. Um, and there are, there are a number of different ways to do this. Um, one way that I'm presenting involves comparing your data set to another data set which you think is good. Um, absent that, there are expectation based on biology, based on divergence and things like that. Again, for those kinds of questions, I refer you to the GATK forum or to other, other forums or on, on the net about sequencing in, in species other than Homo sapiens. Um, but a simple way of doing this is when you have high quality data available, compare your data to the high quality data and see if there's anything sort of glaringly bad. And so <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is, is show you a, an analysis I did. We got um, data from an unknown source with an unknown sequencing technology processed with an unknown informatics pipeline. Basically, somebody handed me VCF and said, these are Finnish samples, they're from Northern Europe, is it any good? And so there were 62 of them I said, well, 1,000 genomes has a set of finished samples, whole genome sequence as well. Um, I'm just gonna see if there's something very different between what I see in these samples and what I see in 1,000 genomes. And so the tool I used for this was variant eval. Right? And what this is going to allow you to do is take aggregate views of your data. What's the transition transversion rate? How many variants were there per sample? Um, what's the to total heterozygosity? Um, what's the indel length distribution? What are the frequency distributions? Um, and then compare across the sort of samples that I have 
and those that came from the 1000 Genomes Project. And if there's a glaring difference, so for instance, if my samples have a TITV of one, whereas the 1000 Genomes has a TITV of 2.2, this is saying that there's potentially something going on and that needs sort of more specific attention. <clears throat> now, what Variantavel does is it provides one of these reports. Um, so you pass in the things you want to evaluate. You pass in what are called um, comp rods. And what they, can be, what they do is they allow additional stratifications. So you can say things that are, um, for instance, present in my calls, that's the evaluator, um, and I'm comparing them to the 1,000 genomes all sites. So basically, if there are my calls and the 1,000 genomes all sites with these particular novelties, what are the number of variants that I found like that? Um, and so the output table is optimized to be read in by some of the scripts that we provide in the GATK. Um, so it starts with the fact that it is a GATK report. It gives you the, the particular parsing format and it gives you the name of the table on a quick description. And then it has all of this data that you can sort of query and evaluate. And so what you can do is say, you know, for my particular case, I'm evaluating sort of a, rant, a call set that I don't know where it came from. I also want to see what it looks like for the 1,000 genomes finished samples. So for all of these results that I get for the evaluators here, I have an expectation that can be generated from here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, look at sites that are polymorphic and on the Omni chip, which is the large genotype chip. So polymorphic in the 1,000 genome samples and on the Omni chip. Here's monomorphic sites, which we think are likely false positives. So I want to be able to see how many true things we recapture, how many false things that seem to be cropping up. Um, and I also want to see sort of the average, you know, for anything that's polymorphic in 1000 G, what, is it, what do these statistics look like in my particular calls and in the finished calls? And, you know, this is where basically the table on output. And I went through that already. <laughs> um, and so what happens is it produces this table that then you can digest by I or by pulling it into R, and you can sort of look and see, you know, here's what it looks like for the call set that I want to evaluate. And you see that the known trends and transversions are a little bit different between my calls and the finished samples, but not, not too extremely different. Um, the novel is spot on, but in terms of the number of novel SNPs, there's a depletion of about 30,000. So I would have expected to see about 100,000 calls that weren't in dbSNP-127 um, just by sequencing a random 62 samples from Northern Europe. Instead, I'm finding that there are 72,000. So immediately, this pops out as, as a potential difference, a potential issue. Um, so what could potentially cause a drop in novel SNPs? Well, overfiltering could do it, right? So you could have a, a call set that's aggressively filtered. Or there could be some kind of relatedness between these samples, and so they're sharing genotypes more than you would expect. Um, and so in order to, to further look at that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an additional stratification. So the command line is more or less the same as before, but now I want to see all these annotations on a per sample basis rather than an, an aggregate on the call site. And by splitting up by sample, it allows you to compare distributions of, the, of these things and see if there are shifts in the distributions. So what we'd expect to see, for instance, um, if, if the samples are related, is that um, the number of novel sites per sample should be shifted lower because they're, they're not unique to that sample. <clears throat> and so what happens is if you, take, if you take these and you plot it now, you compare it, you have, here's my calls in these big bars, and here's fin, which is nice and tight. What you have is there's a, you know, a big dispersion in the number of novel, novel variants per sample. And so what it, it could be that these samples had lower coverage, potentially, or something like lower coverage. And so fewer variants were assessed in these particular samples. Or it could be that in these samples there's some sort of cryptic relatedness, so that they're sharing genotypes more than, more than you would expect. But in bulk, the answer is that this call set is different from what I would expect. And it's different enough to say, you know, I think that there's, this is not of the same quality as 1,000 genomes. Does that mean you don't analyze it? No, but it, it means that care is certainly needed. Um, and so that's sort of a, a whirlwind tour th through variant manipulation and evaluation. 
um, which basically brings us to the end of the pipeline. Any questions? As long as the VCFs are valid, yes. Great, thanks a lot guys. <laughs>